Good morning, New Beginnings Church of Life family. We're so glad that you're here. Now, let's prepare our hearts, minds, and bodies to worship Jesus together. Good morning, everyone. I am glad that you're here with us once again, and uh, we are celebrating this weekend uh, Memorial Day. This is Memorial Day weekend, and as you well know, Memorial Day represents a honoring of all those soldiers that have fall, fallen in all the U.S. wars that we've had, from the Revolutionary War all the way down to the Global War on Terror, all the conflicts that we've had in that. And we are honoring all those soldiers that have fallen and have made the ultimate sacrifice so we can enjoy the freedoms that we have today. I did a little research on that, and uh, as I was uh, counting up the different uh, battle casualties in all the wars, there were like 12 wars uh, total, and uh, including all the uh, conflicts in uh, the global war on terror, uh, there was over a million soldiers killed from the Revolutionary War all the way down to current. Uh, to be exact, a million one hundred eighty-three thousand two hundred and seventy-one, and that's just soldiers alone. Now counting all those that may have gotten sick and died later, or even the civilian casualty count. So there were a lot of soldiers that died for us to enjoy that the freedoms that we have now today and that's why it's so important and paramount that we uh, you know make sure that the freedoms that we are enjoying now stay where they are and we don't let anyone else come and try to take those away from us today I want to uh, share something different with you in the 
The book of Lamentations, I actually want to bring you to Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. I'm going to start there. I'm not going to expound on it too much right now. But Lamentations was written by a prophet, an Old Testament prophet, by the name of Jeremiah. And he writes here in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, he says, Because of the Lord's great love, and how many know God has great love? You know, God is love. Uh, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. And then verse 23, it says, They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You know, Jeremiah, as I said before, he was an Old Testament prophet. And he was well acquainted with grief and sorrow and affliction and pain. He was well acquainted with that. You know, he was called the weeping prophet. He weeped for his nation, for his people, because they were going the wrong way, and maybe even for some of the things, the conditions he was in. He was in, ex in exactly great conditions himself. You know, Jeremiah lived in a time where the people of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah, which is called Judah, were very rebellious towards the Lord. They were very rebellious. And Jeremiah tried to warn them time and time again, but from the leaders right down to the people, they just wouldn't listen to him. He would call them to repent and to turn from their wicked ways and turn from worshiping other gods. You know, and they would not listen to him. Matter of fact, God, when he called Jeremiah to be a prophet, he told Jeremiah, that the people wouldn't listen to him. But he still was going to give them warning because God was finally at the point that he was going to bring judgment on Israel. You know, God always tried to warn his people from even from the time of Moses through all the prophets down that if they strayed from him and they began to do wrong things and did not live right according to what he wanted them to live by, that he would bring judgment upon them. But he warned them for many, many years, and he tried to get them to turn around for many, many years, and yet they kept doing the wrong things. But now he was at the point that he was ready to bring judgment on Judah. And he had just bring judgment on the northern kingdom, because the, the Israel was divided in two kingdoms at that point, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And Assyria had come in, and they had captured and carried away uh, all the Israelites, many of the Israelites, from the northern kingdom. And so that happened, so the southern kingdom was left, and now God, he, he was warning them. He, he had already been warning them. And you think they would have learned the lesson by seeing what happened to the northern kingdom, to their brothers in the northern kingdom, but they still wouldn't listen. So... Jeremiah, he warned them of impending doom if they did not repent and turn back to the Lord. But instead of listening to him, they mistreated him. And I'm just going to read something to you of how they mistreated him. And I'll tell you where I read that from in just for a minute. But, you know, after several years of, of Jeremiah preaching and prophesying these warnings to Judah... Even his family turned against him and plotted to kill him. And then over the years, he was whipped and put in stocks. He was attacked by a mob. I'm just going to give you know overview of some of the things that happened to him. He was attacked by a mob. He was threatened by the king. He was ridiculed. Some of Zedekiah's princes had Jeremiah arrested, beaten, and accused of treason, and then thrown in jail. And then from there, he was thrown into a deep, empty well where there was no more water but the the bottom of the well was all mud and he just sank in there and they left him in there alone he didn't die in there but they left him in there and uh, <clears throat> he lived through the siege of Jerusalem along with the rest and was there as the people were taken away captives so he was there when Babylon came in and they took Judah captives and uh and then perhaps worst of all, Jeremiah was alone. He was not allowed to marry. 
uh, and his uh, family abandoned him, as I said before. The people turned against him and didn't believe him. He was alone with the knowledge of the horrors coming for Judah. He was alone with that. He knew what was going to happen to them. And I'm reading this from the BibleStudyTools.com on the Internet. So if you want to read more into that, that's where I, I, I received this from. He was, the mistreat, he was mistreated, he was not listened to, and he was a prophet that went into captivity in Babylon. And he wept for his nation. Even though, even though they were treating him wrong. See, they didn't want to hear what the word of the Lord said. They didn't want to hear the truth because they didn't want to live for the Lord. They wanted to continue to live in the ways that they were living. So they didn't want to hear what Jeremiah was saying. And so they were mistreating him because of that. They didn't want to uh, accept that. And even though they were that way, he wept for that nation because he knew what was going to happen to them if they didn't repent. And, uh, you know, and if anyone had the right to be down, it was Jeremiah. He was a rejected prophet. They hated him. They rejected him. They didn't want to listen to him. They did all those, uh, those uh, things, that the, those wrong things that they did to him. Yet through all the discouragement that he went through and all the adversity that he went through, he still pens this verse in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, which I read to you in the beginning of this message. And it says this once again, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. I want you to think about that for a moment. Because of the great love that God had for those people, even though they had rejected him. See, when they rejected Jeremiah, they weren't just rejecting Jeremiah. They were rejecting God. They didn't want to know anything about God. They didn't want to know anything about what he wanted them to do. They were actually rejecting the Lord as they were rejecting Jeremiah. I think he told the Lord told Samuel the same thing when they rejected him and they wanted a king back in those days, Samuel the prophet. And, uh, and it says here in Lamentations, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Even though they rejected the Lord, God still loved them. Did he have to bring discipline on them? Yes. See, God didn't bring discipline on them right away. He waited years, even from the time of Moses, when Moses gave them the Ten Commandments, and they were doing all kinds of wrong things. And when he came down, he saw them uh, erecting another God. Even back then, they were doing wrong things. After God had delivered them, they were doing wrong things. From that time on, God warned his people all the way up to Isaiah and Jeremiah. Through all the prophets, God warned his people that if you stray from me, if you stray from me, I'm going to have to bring judgment on you. But he didn't bring it right away. It was years. It was hundreds of years before he actually did this. You know, God's patience, patient level, patience level is great. You know, he doesn't bring judgment on us right away. You know, he will give us a time and a space to repent. And hopefully we take that time to repent when he warns us. And he warned them. He warned them. But they just continued and they wouldn't listen. But even, even though they wouldn't listen because his love is so great for them, they were not consumed. Because he even prophesied through Isaiah and some of the other prophets that, that you know, they would go into captivity. But after 70 years, he would bring them back again. He had to discipline them. And hopefully after that, they would learn to finally say, yes, God, will do it your way. We'll repent. And because of his great love, they were not consumed. They were not destroyed altogether. For his compassions never fail. God's compassions never fail. He may have to discipline at times, but his love is so great and his compassions never fail. And it goes on to verse 23, They are new every morning, 
great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. His uh, mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Jeremiah knew that even though God was displeased with his people, he would one day bring them back from captivity. He knew that. And because of his great love, Israel would not be consumed, as I said before. They would not be consumed. His compassions would never fail for them. And he had a plan for them and a purpose even after he had to discipline them. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness, the word says. You know, Jeremiah, even though he had gone through all that he went through, he encouraged himself with this verse he wrote, despite all he went through personally and corporately, he encouraged himself in that. And if Jeremiah, people of God, can encourage himself, with this verse, so can we. Let me tell you, I'm not saying, and I don't downplay the things that we go through, but I dare say that we probably, 99% of us probably don't go through what Jeremiah had to go through. And if he can encourage himself, so can we. Amen? As Jeremiah people, God, we too can have our down moments, and I don't downplay that. Our down moments may not be like Jeremiah's, but they can be just as severe to us in those ways. And it can be from many things or many places. It can come from many things or many places, from people, places, and things. We can be discouraged and become down and uh, have our down moments. But through everything we may go through, we must understand because of his great love for us, we will not be consumed. God will not allow us to be consumed. And we also need to understand that His mercies are new every morning. And I want to make proof of that by something I want to share with you in just a moment. His mercies are new every morning. You know, in Psalms 35, it says this, and this is the part I want to bring to you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You know, we may have our down moments and our sorrows for that night season. And we may go through night seasons of having a down type of moment. A down, you know, the, the sorrows that we may go through. We may have those. But know that the morning is coming. Daybreak is coming. We're going to have a daybreak. Remember, his mercies are new every morning. And with the morning, when it comes, once that night season is broke, when the morning comes, his joy comes with that once again. A joy comes in the morning. We won't be down forever, people of God, because it won't last forever. You know, people think that when they go through depression and discouragement and all these different things that they go through, it's going to last forever. No, it's not. The Lord is not going to allow us to be consumed. We may go through it for a night season, but the daybreak is coming, morning is coming, and with morning comes a new joy and a new hope with that. And we must have to, uh, we must understand that and, you know, and hang on, hang on until that morning comes because daybreak will come for your lives. And I believe that we won't be down forever because it won't last forever. Why? Because his mercies are new every morning and he is faithful to that. He is faithful to bringing new mercies upon us every morning because we need it, because we can't survive. If we don't have, we can't survive to have a forever night season in our lives. We'll die in that. And he knows that. And his mercies are new every morning. And great is his faithfulness to that. Hallelujah. Jeremiah knew that. And that gave him hope. 
that gave him hope to survive. Can you imagine while he was down in that well, that cold, damp, dark well with mud holding his feet and legs there, what he must have been thinking. Can you imagine? I don't even know how long he was down there. i got to do some research to see possibly how long he was down there. Can you imagine that being in a situa situation like that? That must have brought great discouragement and fear uh, on him there and depression. He must have thought he was going to die there. But he didn't die there because he apparently was carried away with the captives to Babylon. So he didn't die in that well. You know, and, and so he knew that his morning would come, and he had to encourage himself, people, God. And we, too, need to encourage ourselves and telling ourselves that our daybreak is going to come. When the new morning comes, joy will come with it, with a new hope. We will not be down with discouragement forever. You know, and Jeremiah knew that, and that gave him hope. He knew as the new morning came new hope would spring forth even in his life and what he was experiencing. Praise the Lord for that. And we too, people of God, we need to know this too. Our weeping will only last for a night season, for a night, because his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness in that. Amen. He knows we can only endure weeping for a moment. He knows that. And that's why he will bring his mercies, new mercies, every morning. Let me uh, just share with you what brought this message on. You know, I usually pray, when I pray, I usually pray uh, in the wee hours of the morning until dawn arrives. And uh, this one morning, not so long ago, you know, that I was praying. Uh, I was down when I came out of prayer, and you know, and that's not the usual. Usually, when I come out of prayer because I have met with the Lord, uh, I am rejuvenated. You know, I have new life within me. I'm springing up with new life because the Holy, Sp the Holy Spirit fell down on me and has rejuvenated me, and I come out of my prayer closet with new life for that day. But this one day, this one day, I was down, and I couldn't understand why. Why am I down? Why am I cast down? And maybe it was because of some, you know, weight and burdens that I, I felt I was shouldering, and it was, you know, in a way discouraging me. And, you know, whatever it was, it doesn't matter now, because let me just tell you what happened. So, you know, as I was thinking on this, as I came out of prayer, and why am I down and all this thing, the dawning light of the new day began to stream in the windows. You know, like I say, usually I pray in the wee, wee hours of the morning and, and to the coming of daybreak, to the dawn. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been in that situation as I pray. And so, uh, so this dawning light comes streaming in the windows. And as I looked, something else caught my attention. Something else that I heard before but never really listened to. And it was all the different birds that were waking up and singing and celebrating the new, the new morning that just arrived. They were all singing and celebrating. And see, where I pray is in my living room near my couch area. And my little side windows of the big picture window is were open and I could hear these birds begin to sing and chirping, chirping and singing all over the place. And I'm and I heard this before, but now I'm listening to it. I'm listening to it. And they were celebrating this new dawning of the day. And as I said before, and I can't tell you how many times I heard this as I prayed through the wee hours to the cracking of the dawn. But this time, like I said before, I, I listened to these birds sing. And every morning they do this and we take it for granted. Those of us that are up this early or sometimes are up this early, you'll hear these birds, but we don't pay any attention to it. We take it for granted. But this time I was listening. And I thought, they're not only singing and celebrating the new dawning of the day, but the way they are singing, it was a, a praise to him that made them. 
it was it was like a praise. I mean, they were all in unison together, singing together, and it was like a praise going up to their creator, God, who created them. It sounded like praise to me. And you know, and it's no wonder that the word says that the Lord is aware basic of every bird that falls to the ground. Why? Because I believe he made that when that innate uh, unction, that when morning comes, they are celebrating and praise of that new morning to him. And he doesn't take that lightly. Those birds bring praise to him. And, uh, and here are these birds, they woke up singing and praising the Lord, not bringing with them what may have happened the day before or the yesterdays. It's a new day to them. They're celebrating. It's a new day. No, the new morning gave them a new hope. It gave them a new hope, and they were thanking their Creator for another day of life. It was remarkable, people of God. As I were listening to them, and they were all serenading the Lord. They were all singing together in union, in, in unison, you know, and, and chirping this, and this bird was chirping. I can't even tell you how many different kinds of birds were, were you know, coming forth and just bringing their voices to the Lord. You know, their little chirps, their little sing, singing to the Lord. And as I was listening, I realized... This is how we need to be. That's what I realized. So I quickly took out my little MP3 recorder. I quickly got it, and I went into my backyard, and I held it up just to record these birds singing and bringing praise to their creator. I, was, I recorded it. And then I went back into the house, and I went by the kitchen window, because that's where the morning doves were. And I began to record the morning dove sounding off near my kitchen window. It was just remarkable to me how they were doing that. And then I stopped. And I said, you know what? These little birds have just taught me a lesson. I come out of prayer feeling down. And they're all singing and praising God. They're not worried about the yesterdays or what happened yesterdays. They were celebrating the today, the new morning. The new morning that God has given them. They were all waking up and celebrating that with a new hope, what the day would bring. Oh my gosh. And as I heard them sing, I stopped the recorder, and then I began to sing praises to my God. I just began to give him praise. As I realized that my fe my fine feather friends, what they were teaching me that morning. <laughs> it's funny how God uses things to teach you, you know. He can use anything to teach us. And I began to praise the Lord. And immediately, the Spirit of God fell upon me. He fell upon me in that very spot. I began to praise him. And that heaviness I felt and that discouragement, gone. Gone. It was gone immediately. I mean, it might have been gone as I was hearing them, the little birds, praise the Lord. And they're singing to him. But it was solidified. It was completely gone. All that discouragement was gone as I worshiped the Lord with these little birds and the Spirit of God just fell upon me, and that heaviness was gone. It was beautiful. It was remarkable. But in the end, what I did, I traded my sorrows. I traded my heaviness. When I put on the garment of praise, like those little guys out in the trees and the bushes, like those little guys do that sing at the crack of day, I traded my sorrows and heaviness, and I put on the garment of praise. And that heaviness was gone, and I was rejuvenated, and I was ready now to really take on the day, because I got rid of the heaviness 
of the yesterdays that were trying to hold me down. These scriptures here prophesy what Jesus will do for us when he comes. And we find that in Isaiah 61, 1, 1 through 3. And it says this, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And this Jesus read this when he was in the synagogue. He said these scriptures are fulfilled. So let's read this. This is all about Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. And then going to verse 3 of 61, 61 verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. Amen. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Amen. The garment of praise. Here we go. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. You know, besides all these other beautiful, wonderful things that the Lord does for us, He trades us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He says, here, take my garment of praise. Begin to praise me, and I'll take that heaviness from you. You want to trade? Here's my garment. Put it on, use it, and I'll take that heaviness. Oh, my goodness gracious. What a great trade-off that is. Amen? And he does that. And that is one of our spiritual weapons, people of God. We need to use, learn to use that spiritual weapon when we're going through down times. We need to trade off the spirit of heaviness by putting on his garment of praise. And praise him in our dark times. We need to do that. It's a weapon. It's one of our spiritual weapons. We need to learn to praise him when... We are down. And if we do, like I did, if we do, that spirit of heaviness will soon leave and we will have that new joy, that new joy that will cause us to sing and celebrate for the night season is over. Amen. So today, people of God, let me just encourage you. If you are down, know that your night season will soon be over. It's not going to last forever. With every new morning comes new mercies from Him. New mercies of joy and hope. And as we praise Him like our fine feathered friends out there, we will soon trade that spirit of heaviness for the garment of praise and we will be rejoicing too. Amen. You want to rejoice? Then take the garment of praise and begin to praise him and get rid of that spirit of heaviness. And it's a spirit that doesn't belong on the people of God. So don't keep wearing it. Trade off for the garment of praise. <clears throat> and let me just also encourage you, you don't have to wait until the morning because as you praise him, even in your darkest moments, even like those two did, you know, that we talk about in the book of Acts that were thrown in prison in the darkest hour, they began to sing praises to the Lord, and they were freed from that prison. You don't have to wait till the morning time comes when the birds sing. Your morning can come in your darkest moments as you Begin to praise the Lord. You know, because you can praise Him in your darkest moments. And you can trade off that spirit of heaviness right there and then. And you will experience the joy of a new day as only your praise can bring. Let me tell you, people of God, I believe the Lord looks at the praise of his birds as important, but how much more important are the praises of his people? 
Think about that. He looks for our praises, and he's ready to trade off. When you put on that garment of praise, he says, let me take that spirit of heaviness. He's ready to trade it out and bring you a new morning. Joy comes in the morning with a new hope. Amen. And Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, it says again, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. He loves us so much that we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness towards us. And then again in Psalms 35, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Let's up our heads in prayer, and let me just pray for you. Father, thank you so much for this word. And Lord, if there are those that are down and discouraged today, Lord, you have given them, Lord, the tools to come out of that, Lord. Let them trade that spirit of heaviness for the garment of praise. Let them put on that garment of praise. And even though they may be in their darkest moments, as they praise you, Lord, and celebrate that you are going to give them a new morning, just like you gave those birds that sing every morning to you. God, they're going to come out of that weeping, of that night season of weeping, and they're going to spring forth into a new day of rejoicing where new joy and hope falls upon them. And let them rejoice in you to experience that new morning of joy, Father, I ask in the name of of Jesus. Amen. Do that. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Turn your darkest moments into a new morning of joy and hope. Amen. And you know, I'm going to leave you with this. As we go today, I'm going to let you listen to what I heard that morning. And perhaps it will inspire you to praise him like those little guys do in the trees and in the bushes every morning. God bless you, people of God. Happy Memorial Day, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to go to mbcol-ny.com to connect with us. Or you can find us on Facebook and YouTube. Leave a comment, subscribe, and follow us. We would love to hear from you. There are two ways you can partner with us and give. You can go old school by making out your check and mailing it to New Beginnings Church of Life, 202 East Commercial Street, East Rochester, New York, 14445. Or you can go new school and give online at nbcol-ny.com.